One. Uh, hey, everybody. Welcome to The Rock Shop with Ralph, your source for all things entertainment. And we are live with the guitarist from NON, DOD, Hollywood Monsters, Jim Crean, among many other bands. But we're going to be talking about all of them today. We have the one and only Mr. Steph Hahn with us tonight. Hello. Hello, everybody. <laughs> How are you, Steph? I'm very good. And you? I'm doing excellent. I, I have a saying what I say. Kicking life in the nuts. That's what I'm doing. I'm kicking life in the <laughs> nuts. Right. I don't know how to say it in French, but we'll say it in English. I kick life in the nuts. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds better than English. <laughs> yes. So um, how's everything going over there? You're in France? Yeah, I live in the south of France. Things are pretty uh, slow, like for everybody in the, in, in the world these days. Right. So you can do yourself busy with uh, recording new music. I'm practicing, like you see, like on Facebook, I'm doing all my cover videos. Yes. So I can get in shape uh, vocal-wise and guitar-wise and everything. Yeah, I so, mean, you're, you have a, a large following on Facebook. Uh, uh, one thing we have, we're going to discuss about is, number one, you're a guitarist, you're a keyboardist, yeah. you play the bass, you sing yeah. great, you're an illustrator. Yeah. Uh, we have your sketches on Facebook. And is there anything that you don't do? Do you paint houses? No, I uh, I have a um, um, shrink a diploma as well. You have a what? Uh, a shrink diploma. A shrink. Yeah, for real. Uh, oh. That I did pass uh, last year because I love that. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. Wow, that's awesome. Yeah. So basically, uh, we're live. We're live on Facebook. We're live on YouTube. Uh, everybody can see it. Um, so what we want to discuss, we're going to discuss is um, your career from the beginning. Mm -hmm. You started in a band called Cafe Bert Bertrand. Yes. And your album was produced by Roger Glover from Deep Purple. Yes. So you want to talk about that a little bit? So, yeah, it's, um, I joined Cafe Bertrand. Uh, I don't remember, like maybe in 2000, something like that, or 2005, I don't remember. It's a long time ago now. Right. And um, um, one day I met the French promoter of Deep Purple, and uh, I told him that we were going to, to play in the Hard Rock Cafe in Paris, and asked him if he wanted to come and see us. But I... Uh, I didn't think he was going to uh, to come because he's a very busy man. So we played, uh, we played our asses off. And uh, at the end of the show, he came to me. I said, wow, he came. And he said, I loved it. And he said, yeah, bye. And, and uh, I heard from him like the next week. And he said, do you want to play with Deep Purple for just one gig? I said, yeah, sure. <laughs> it's my all time favorite band ever. So yeah. So we did one gig with them. They liked us, and uh, we did like uh, more than a, a year with, her, with with them. So we played forty three shows in in France. Wow! So we got we got along with uh, Don Ere, Roger Glover, and everything. So so one day we did ask him, him if he wanted to uh, to help us with our new album. That was pretty surrealistic uh, to to be able to to hang out with uh, these guys. Right, they were I was super nice. I, right, I was going to say to you, it must be it must be crazy. Do you have, did you have to pinch yourself and stay in, you know seeing one of your heroes that you're recording with? It was sometimes I wish I could go back in time and do it again in a better way. Uh, yeah, that happens with because me too sometimes. Yeah, it happens to me it, when I do an interview. Sometimes I say, "Oh, yeah. I should have asked that question. I should have. I, I I look stupid. You know. Sometimes I scratch my head and I said, "Oh, I shouldn't have scratched my head." But you look, you know. Yeah, and and because I was, I don't know, like maybe three or less than that, and that was my really first big thing. And uh, you want to prove yourself. You want to show off a little bit. And I wouldn't, I wouldn't do that now nowadays. And. Um, and uh, I was very shy, so maybe people thought that I was arrogant, but I was just shy. 
Right. And, um, because that was, uh, I remember one night I was, we were playing, and on, on the left I saw Roger Glover and Don Eric taking pics of, of us while we were playing. And I was like, oh, I was in shock. I was like, oh, I can't play. <laughs> I have bad heroes looking at me. And then I looked on the right, and there was a, like, Steve Morse on us. <laughs> I can't play. It's like, yeah, I felt very frustrated as a, as a musician because right. I was very uh, impressed. And I just wanted to show you that we are live. Uh, I was telling you, we are on Facebook Live. Uh, we're on our YouTube channel, and we're on both my personal and show pages. And there is close captioning with subtitles. I don't know if the subtitles are for me with my Queen's accent or they're for you with your French accent. So Yeah, we don't know. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. But who would have thought that it, that some schmo from Queens would interview somebody all the way in France? <laughs> yeah, Sonny. And same for me. That's yes. what I always say. think about myself. I say, who knew? Like, I'm from a small town in the south of France that one day I would be living in L.A., playing with Vinny or playing for Paul Diano, right. which was my first ever uh, favorite band, like Iron Maiden. We're going to get to all that. We're going to get to all that, <laughs> Steph. Well, all I got to tell you first is I am a huge fan of yours. Everybody's going to know about you. I mean, a lot of people do know about you, but more people are going to know about you after this interview because you are super talented and an all-around great guy. So Thanks. you we know about Cafe. Am I pronouncing it right? Bertrand? Yeah. yeah. Okay, great. Now, you leave Cafe Bertrand and you decide to tour with Iron Maiden's first singer, Paul Diano. So the story is that, that we had the opportunity to play for ACDC before that, that, that story. And uh, things weren't going very well with Café Bertrand. It, it was kind of a spinal tap uh, thingy with that band. Everything was going wrong, but we, we were making it anyway. But we never used to rehearse and do nothing. It was, it was just a mess. And so we got the, the gig with ACDC. So we played at the biggest stadium in France, the Stade de France, in front of 80,000 people. Yeah. And once on stage, I said to myself, uh, I'm done with the band. We've done the best we could do. And I need to move on to something better because I was a little bit frustrated as a musician because that, was, that wasn't really my thing, this, right. this band. And I, want, I, and I wanted to be a singer. So... Uh, I, we all left the band. I mean, we all left the singer. And uh, I guess like maybe a week after, uh, I got a message from um, Paul Diano's um, manager saying that he was looking for a band in France. And uh, so we had to pass an audition and we got the, the gig as well. Because we were all a huge fan of Iron Maiden, so we knew what to do. Yeah, that first album. He's got a, he's got a huge fan base for that one album. You know, I... I how was he as a person? I know some, some stories you hear that he's very hard to get along with. So the, the story is like Lee Hart, his manager, who was the singer for Fastway, by the way. Oh, yeah. Uh, so, say what you will. Yeah. Yeah. No, the, the next album, I think, was the singer on, on, on the last album. Or, and um, the Fastway is a great band, by the way. So he told me, you know what? Paul is very, very uh, difficult. He's weird. He can kill somebody just like that. <laughs> so we talked for months. He used to scare the shit out of me. <laughs> I said, yeah. oh, wow, I'm going to meet one of my heroes, and he's crazy. And uh, he told me a lot of stories, like he punched a uh, guitarist on the face. And, uh, so um, the day came that he arrived in, in France, in Marseille, in the south of France, and uh, we had to pick him up at the, at the airport. And nobody in the band wanted to, to go there because they were scared of him. <laughs> so I went to the airport by, by myself and I was scared. And, uh, and he's uh, kind of tall. I mean, he, he's my size, but he's super big. Right. I was a lot of tattoos everywhere. And when I saw him, I was like, oh, my, my hero. And sometimes I was scared at the same time. That was weird. And he was very nice. He turned out he to be nice. nice. Yeah, it was super nice to me. I mean, uh, we spent two weeks uh, together, and it was 
super nice. There was sometimes he, he got pissed off, which he wasn't fun at all because when he gets angry, you don't want to be around. Right. <laughs> but not at us, not at, at the, the news or something like that. And, uh, so how, how long did you uh, tour with him? Uh, just two weeks. Two weeks. Two weeks, and then uh, he did a song on on the first Hollywood Monster. Fuck you album. all. <laughs> yes, <laughs> and I thought that was a song for him. <laughs> yeah, it seems like his. Well, he actually pl plays in a wheelchair now. He was in. I saw him. Yeah, his health his health isn't doing too well. Yeah, when uh, I played with him, he was already nothing that well. Right. And um, but he was, I mean, walking and. Uh, Last time I saw him was in England. I went to see him at uh, the hospital, and uh, he was in really bad shape. Really? Well, we, and, we uh, wish him we wish him the best. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he's, he's, this guy doesn't have the credit he should have. I mean, he's a he's a legend, that guy. I mean, yeah, he's a legend. Started that started what I am made, and I mean, he was you know, and you can't take that yeah, away from does, him. Yeah, people are always talking about Bruce Dickinson. He's, he's great singer but the first singer was paul and, and the two first albums are amazing right yes i agree with you so yeah. you, you wind up you wind up leaving paul diano and you decide to come to america and yeah I, because i had a lot of i want to move on from a lot of things in france like a divorce and everything i'm like okay i'm going to go on vacation just for two weeks in la i've never been to uh, to the us and um I fell in love with the, with the country. I was like, wow, that, that wasn't what I was expected. Right. And I, everybody was great. The weather was great. And uh, so I got to meet Vinny. Uh, the first person I met was Tim Bogart. And, yeah, uh, which is amazing in itself because uh, let me, I, I just want to start from the beginning with, with this band. The band is called Hollywood Monsters. You started it. Okay. Um, and the the quality of musicians that you picked up for a first album, let me just run by run this by everyone. Tim Bogert, who he was just explained who he, who's just sadly passed away, was in retirement. Tim Bogert yeah. is the bass legend. Any bass player that plays today cites him as an influence. He played yeah. with Beck Bogart and Apathy, I mean, among so many other players. But he played with Tim Bogert, Vinny Apathy, Don Airy, um, that this is all on the first album. Uh, Ted yeah. McKenna played. Uh, uh, I, I, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go on and on to the second and third album. But you yeah. want to share that story about Tim Bogart? Yeah, it's like because while, uh, while I was still in France, I was starting to to write the the songs that were uh, they were going to be the only one of those songs, and I, my dream was to uh, play with um, Vinnie and Tim. So I said to myself, okay, I'm going to write songs and pretend that I'm playing with Vinny and Tim and do something like uh, Vanilla Fudge or Jeff Beck. Vanilla Fudge, right. Yeah, and uh, so I found a way to find Tim's uh, contacts. I called him and uh, he liked my songs. And um, when I flew to LA for the first time, I, I took an appointment with him in a restaurant in Simi Valley. And that was that easy. So we took, we, uh, we had dinner together and uh, he told me about his life, about uh, his philosophy music wise. And um, so that, I think this evening uh, has changed my life uh, a lot. Yes, de definitely. I mean, this first album, let, we're going to go through some of the songs. The first song that, that got my attention was Move On, which which Tim Bogart played on. And you had Don Airy has that yeah. awesome keyboard solo. Um, this song uh, is up on my page. A lot of people like the song. All right. Uh, Don Airy, who, who, those of you who don't know, played in Deep Purple. He played with Ozzy. He played with so many so many. Uh, White famous <laughs> White Snake, right? One of my favorite bands, and I missed it exactly. Play with White Snake. Um, that song is on my page, which is a great song. Another song that you wrote on that one, which got my attention, was called Village of the Damned. Which rumor has it that you wrote that for Vinnie Apathy, yeah, who plays drums on this album. So, yeah, so the funny thing is, like, uh, uh, 
I was with uh, at a friend's house, the guy who had the, the recording material back in the days. And I said, I'm going to jam just by myself. Record me. I'm going to just Im improvise something for, for eight, ten minutes. And I'm going to pretend I'm, I'm playing with Vinny live. I was just by myself with a, a click. So the whole song is a jam. It's all improvised. And the, the, the whole guitar part, it's, it's an um, improvisation. And then uh, I found the, the lyrics on top of that, and then the, the bass. The, the bass uh, of the, the song is just a big jam. Wow. So it, it, it was written in eight minutes. <laughs> yeah, that, that song to me could sounds like it could be a, like a, a 2000, 2016 Dio song. Because once, yeah. once Vinny is playing behind the kid, Vinny has such a distinctive sound, it sounds yeah. like a Dio song. Yeah. You know? Um, and then uh, in 2016, you released a second album with the Hollywood Monsters yeah. called Capture the Sun. Now, on this album... You got that one, don't you? See that? Look at that. Yeah. Now, what's great about that is I I don't have that one, so I'm jealous. <laughs> but I listen to I listen to it. I listen to it a one. lot. Yeah, the first one is called Big Trouble, who we just talked about, and the second one is called Capture the Sun. <laughs> now, I got to tell you, the players on this album are and Tracy G who played with Dio, yes. Neil Murray, who played in Whitesnake, Tony Franklin, the fretless monster, who played with everybody, yes. um, Craig Goldie, who played with Dio, one of my favorites, mm -hmm. and uh, Vinny Abbasi, of course, and there's another drummer on there called Eric Labali. Did I pronounce that right? Yeah, he's a French drummer, a friend of mine, yeah. Who played with somebody we're going to talk about in a little while. Um, he plays on, on the Jim Crean's um, Jim cover Crean. album. Yeah. yeah, that's that's who I was going to talk about in a little bit. But yeah. anyway, one of the songs that are on here, which I got to tell you, this is how I became a huge Steph Hahn fan, is <laughs> called It's a Lie. This song is fucking incredible. I mean, you guys got to listen to this. Danko Jones sings on it. Vinnie Apice on drums. You on guitar. And I, Tim I'm, on bass. Tim Bogart on bass. I can't forget him. I'm sorry. And... I'm trying to find who is Juanita Han. Ginny Ginny Han is the singer of the band Babe Ruth. Babe Ruth. Okay. Yeah, they had a hit in the seventies called the Mexican. Okay. I'm I'm sure you know the song. It's. Uh, I, I'm sure I know it too. I just couldn't find her. I'm 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 sorry. I I was trying to find, but she sings on it. and She sings great. Yeah, she's a great singer. <laughs> I, I mean this 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 song. I and I I was telling you before we went on air. I mean I I listen to this song all the time. I mean, this song makes the album. It really does make the album. But some of the other ones that um, that are on there that, I, that I'm that i a fan of are Always Crashing the Same Car, which is a crazy title. Yeah. Um, Mysteries <laughs> of Life. I like that one. Yeah. It's more um, Pink Floyd-ish. Uh, yeah, it's very, very psychedelic type. Yeah. <laughs> yes. But let me ask you. Um, now... Do you prefer do you prefer to be known as a guitarist? Do you prefer to be known as a vocalist or a, a keyboard player? What do you what do you like to be to be known as? I mean, as a musician. As a musician. See, I knew you were going to say that. I knew you were going to say that stuff. Yeah, really? I, if, yes. No, the thing now I, I enjoy more more uh, singing. Yes. Because I've been frustrated with, with that for for a long time. Because you know, when you play guitar, people see, you only see sees you as, as a musician. I mean, as a guitarist, right? So you can you, you playing guitar, you can sing. I say, yeah, I can do both, or or I can play bass, or and uh, keyboards. Now uh, I would like to focus more on my uh, my vocals. Well, I can tell you that you sound just like David Coverdale. I mean, you nail <laughs> David Coverdale to the T. Um, you released you release a solo CD, which we're going to talk about. But yeah. one of the songs you just put out on your Facebook page was "The Deep of the Love," yeah. the, White, the White Snake song. And it seems to me that a lot of the females were were uh, texting, uh, messaging me on my Facebook page uh, to ask Steph this question, ask Steph that question. So that struck a chord with the female fan base there, uh, Steph. 
<laughs> I promise you. Yeah. <laughs> Do you try to emulate? Is is David Coverdale one of your heroes? No, uh, just my voice. So to me, I mean, I don't want to sing or look like him because I, I think it's just a uh, lost mm -hmm. battle to do that because there's only one Coverdale, there's only one Dio, one, uh, one Gillan. It's just that I, it's a way for me to practice my, my vocals because I think he's one of the, or he was one of the best uh, rock singer uh, singers ever. Yeah. But, uh, but I love so many kind of music. I mean, I, I'm a huge fan of uh, Frank Zappa, King Crimson, Pink Floyd. Really? Wow. Yeah, I would have never I, thought I, you were I have happening. all the Pink Crimson's box sets. <laughs> wow. Yeah, so, I mean, I, I would have never thought Frank Zappa, because the way you sing oh, and... I'm a huge fan of Frank Zappa. I mean, I wow. have all of his albums. I mean, I have hundreds of wow. Zappa albums. <laughs> that's, that's something I didn't know about you. And um, you you released a solo CD called "Covering the Monsters." Yeah. All right. That was uh, I was listening to that before, and some of the songs. Let me just give give you the scope of of the songs that he sings on there. That one. Look, I'm doing my promo. <laughs> there you go. That's what we got. There's your promo. I have yeah. them up on my Facebook page as well, Steph. Um, you sing "Maiden, Bring Your Daughter to the Slaughter" by Maiden. Um, you got Edie Chow Baby by The Cult. Yeah. It's so it's so easy by Guns N' Roses. I'm just trying to show you the scope of how mm -hmm. Steph sings. Not faking it, the Michael Monroe song, which I love. Yeah. Something to Believe in by Poison. No, um, Ramones. Uh, I'm sorry. You're right. You're right. I stand corrected. Turbo Lover by Judas Priest. Yeah. That, that was a good one. And here's my favorite, which it takes balls to, to cover this one. Zero the Hero by none other yeah, than Black was, Sabbath. Yeah. That, I love that song. See, a lot of people don't like that album, Steph, but I love I that love album. I love this album. It's one of my favorites. Yep. They they always I don't understand why people don't like it. It's, it's it the production. The production on yeah, it. It's, yeah, it's really not good. But the you know, songs, the, the way he sings, it's just amazing. Imagine that, yeah, it was crazy. But I, oh, I always loved that album. I always loved that album. Um, and then my one of my other favorites on there, David Coverdale, of course, "Take Me for a Little While." Yeah, great song. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, and that's uh, that's basically your solo album. So then, in two thousand, mother, mother from Danzig. Oh, mother by Danzig. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was trying to highlight some of them, but um, we did. I, his 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 a funny side note here. You recorded for the Hellboy soundtrack, yeah. The Scorpion song, "Rock You Like a Hurricane," but yeah. but wait, hold on, everybody. It was sung in Spanish. Yeah. <laughs> Why I don't know. <laughs> so you got a French, a French vocalist yeah. singing a wait. Well, let me finish. A French vocalist singing a German song in Spanish. <laughs> but the, the funny part is that like I got contacted uh, in the morning. I woke up in the morning, you know, because there's nine hours uh, difference with LA and France. And, and uh, a guy uh, messaged me and says, um, are you um, available to, uh, to sing something for the project? Like, it's going to be a movie. I said, yeah, sure. I, never, I have never done that before. Right. Then I had to wait nine hours. I had to uh, wait for the, the afternoon in the US. In California, and the guy says, apparently it's something kind of huge. Okay, and then nothing for a whole day, and then the next day the guy says, ah, I think it's for a movie from Hollywood. And I said, oh, that sounds interesting. And then, like maybe a week later, oh, that's for the new Hellboy movie. I said, what? <laughs> that's great. He said, so that's a cover of the Scorpions. And I say, oh, yeah, I, I'm not like a huge fan of uh, Scorpions. And uh, I say, I don't know really that well Scorpions, but I, I know the, the song. But they want you to sing in, in Spanish. I said, I don't speak Spanish. <laughs> I know. But they want this song like in four days. I say, okay, so I, because I, I, I play the guitar solo on, on this song. So I, I had to learn the, the guitar solo and I had to, they send me, um, uh, the lyrics in Spanish. Somebody had, had, had to um, 
um, uh, read it for me. I to, so I had to adjust mimic the. Yeah, the yeah. The I was going to say. But I had only four days to do it. <laughs> that was four crazy. weeks. And then I had to wait. I had to wait six months to uh, to uh, to have uh, um, the Scorpions approval because they had to listen to the um, the song. Yes, but I tell you, it's it's a great song. It's a great song. I listened to it. It was a, I was a little taken aback when I first heard it because I they said, "Oh, Steph Han is singing the song," but it was on a world. It was on a worldwide movie. the 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 movie yeah. was released worldwide, so you got exposure with that. But I was taken aback when it was in Spanish. I was like, "Whoa!" Yeah, me too. Me too. You too, right? <laughs> That's funny. And then I got to see. I got to see the the movie. That was. A great feeling to to go to movies and hear your voice. And, and yeah, you just on that big screen, sure. Yeah, for, for just a few seconds. <laughs> yeah, for a second, right? But is there anybody that you haven't played with that you really would love to play with, uh, Steph? Uh, anybody? There's so many, there's so, so many people. I mean, there's the the list is endless. I mean, in any kind of style of music, I would like. I would love to to. Uh, to play for Roger Waters, for example. Really? Yes, because to me he's a musical genius. I would love to. I would love to meet, of course, David Crowell. I would love to play for Glenn Hughes. Uh, where else? I mean, there's so many. I don't. I don't know. I would. Like, I would love to meet uh, Roger Daltrey from The Who. Right. Uh, which is his birthday? His birthday's today. Yes. Seventy-seven years old. Uh, and young. still belting it out. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I mean, that? He, has the, uh, he has the pipes too, or yeah. seventy-seven year old. Yeah. And he has the hair and, too. Yeah, <laughs> still great. And he looks ten years younger. Yeah, he's uh, he's still belting it out. And they just released an album two years ago as well. The, the who? Yeah, it's pretty good. That it's it's a pretty good album. Yeah, I, I listened to it. So uh, also now. Uh, Hollywood Monsters, you released another album called Thriving yeah. on Chaos. Yes, but only in Brazil. Yeah, only in Brazil. At the moment. But it was available in the United States. It's just out of print now, but this one... Now, of course, Vinny, Vinny Abbasi still plays on this one. Um, that's my favorite album. That's your favorite out of them? Yeah. Now, here's... I'm going to tell you what my favorite song on there. Uh, I have... I have three of them. The first one is Scream Looking for a Mouth. Yeah. With the Don Airy solo as well. Um, mm -hmm. The second one is Cold Sweat with Danko Jones again, yeah. who sounds just like Phil Lynott. I mean, yeah. this guy, I don't understand why he's not huge. I mean, he, I he's... Don't, I don't get it either. I, he's, big, he's big overseas in, by you, like in Europe, Danko Jones. Yeah, he's big in Sweden. And Sweden, right. Yeah. He's big over there. Over here, he's known more of a cult following. But this guy yeah, smokes. That's... He's got such a voice. I mean, and your solo on there. If you guys don't pick this album up and listen to this solo, there's something wrong with you guys because Steph smokes yeah. on this song. The solo is blistering. I mean, I've tried to keep the, the John Sykes uh, feel, but I didn't play this, the, the same thing. I understand. I, well, nobody can be John Sykes, but I got to give no. it to you, Steph. I got to give you props. You you really smoke on that solo. You really, really do. And to 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 pick a Thin Lizzy song and to try to play like John Sykes, I mean, it's almost impossible. But you guys did it justice because that song really, really is killer. You know. Thanks. And one other song I wanted to talk about on here with you is "I'm the Best That You Can Get." <laughs> that the uh, the bonus track, yeah. Yeah, with Alex von Craven on the drums. Yeah, great drum. That guy's what an awesome drummer. Now, for those of you who don't know Alex von Craven, he he plays the drum, double bass, endorses Pearl drums, and he kills it every time. And he wears a skull mask on when he plays yeah. to hide his face. But uh, yeah. it's kind of weird watching it, and it, some people might be a little scared. But this guy kills it, kills it, um, mm -hmm. on that. And Glenn Drover played guitar on that as well, correct? Yeah. Glenn Drover from Megadeth. Um, and, um, yeah, I was saying that the, nobody knows, but the song, um, A Scream Looking for a Mouth. Right. I wrote this song like a, it's, it's a kind of a tribute to Henry Rollins. Henry Rollins? Yeah, because he's one of my uh, all-time uh, heroes. Really? <laughs> 
Be- because I, I love punk music. That's really my thing. Well, it shows that it's, it shows that it's a lie. That song, it's a lie. Yeah, and I would love to be in a punk band. <laughs> wow, but, but uh, it's weird because uh, the way the way you sing and the way you look and the way you play, I don't see you as being uh, have those punk influences. Yeah, but I do. <laughs> I, yeah, I, I, I believe you. I I love the Ramones. I love the Misfits uh, and the Rollins band and uh, Black Flag. Black Black Flag. But wow. but I, I like the um, the um, the things that Henry Rollins says, and I, I, I like the way he is. The um, the way he is, like he, uh, the fact that he's always curious, that he, he always works out because. He has to do something. That he travels all the time. That he uh, is a real music fan, and I'm I'm kind of the same like him. Like I'm only interested in music. <laughs> right. That's right. And, so uh, so now here's where here's where we get you coming over and trying to break. And you did break into America. You hooked up with Jim Crean. Yeah. Who is is a is a very good friend of the show, and people know I'm a huge fan of Jim Crean. Jim Crean is the singer in the Apathy Brothers, Drum Wars. He's played out. He's played out with them, Drum Wars. Um, he has his own solo band. I mean, Jim Crean is the hottest working rock musician in America, hands mm-hmm. down. Over the last ten years, he released album after album after album, and, he, hey, and he's go ahead. He's a great guy. Yeah, he re- yeah. he released. Over the last two years, he released three covers albums. You know, he released the London Fog CD, which we're going to talk about, which you played on. He has a new mm-hmm. CD coming out, which you're going to be on as well. Uh, and as I said, he's uh, Carmine and Vinny Apice's, uh lead singer. But here's the album that we're talking about. Yeah. It's called The London Fog. See, I have one, Steph. There you go. Good. <laughs> yeah, look at that. It's autographed. <laughs> Perfect. Um, yeah, mine is not. I don't think. So. Oh, yeah. Yes. Look, mine too. Oh, yours is autographed. There you go. Look <laughs> at that. So now I want to go over these songs that you play on. Actually, you play on almost every one on the album. Uh, on, on on all of them except all them, one. Except for one. Correct. So the first song is a tribute to my favorite singer and one of my heroes of all time, Ronnie James mm-hmm. Dio. It's called Scream Taker. Mm. Um, and on this one, you got Stefan playing guitar, Vinny Apice playing drums, and Rudy Sazo on bass. And I, and I played um, the intro, the, the, uh, keyboard, the keyboard. Uh, thing. Yeah. Now, when, when, you, when you start recording an album with Jim, now let's, let's take a song like that, Scream Taker. Do you come up with, with the guitar riffs, or does Jim have it, Jim has it set and you're just, you know, Copying it for, for this album, uh, G- Jim came with um, most of the musical ideas. I mean, he had most of the time a riff, so I had to uh, make it like arrange it a little bit to mm-hmm. my way. So I would do that. I would add the bass, the drums, everything. I, I, I would play everything. Right. Send it to him. He will add vocals. And then we will send uh, the song to uh, Vinny and uh, Rudy, and uh, so it, it's it takes a while to to uh, to, do, to work this way. Yeah, because you're you're doing everything cross country. I don't think Jim Jim is upstate. Yeah, and, and for New me York. it's like recording the album twice because I have to to record the demo myself. Right. All the instruments, all of them, and then once, like for example, once Vinny records the the drums. I re-record my guitar parts to fit them with uh, with Vinny to make them tight, especially the, the bass. Right. Because on the the next album, I play the bass on the, the whole album. Right. Yeah. That. So that was uh, like I said. That's the opening track, "Scream Taker," which is a tribute to Dio, which is one of my favorites on the the whole album. Is, I, I I can't say enough about Jim and and his albums. I'm a huge fan, but that was one of my favorites on there. And here's here's a a, a close second. Is the song "Conflicted"? Um, that that opening riff as well is is killer. Yeah, thanks. You know, it said, and on that one, uh, Ad Zimmer plays the bass, and Vinny Apice's on the drums. Um, that's the next song, "Lady Beware." That song reminds me of you remember Aldo Nova, the song "Fantasy." Yeah. 
Hmm? That's that song kind of re reminds me of that one. Really? Yeah, yeah. You don't hear it. Yeah, to me, it reminds me of Scorp Scorpions. Oh, the Scorpions. I don't know why. <laughs> yeah, everybody, I guess, is different. Yeah. But um, now the most famous song on the album, which was a bit of a hit, is of course "Passion," that was recorded. Yeah. That was the so old Rod one, Stewart song, and you play keyboards yeah. on that. Yeah. So that no, I, I play uh, on that one. I play uh, keyboards and guitar. And guitar, right? Yeah. That one, I was uh, very impressed because I, I got to play with Carmine and Tony. Yeah. And it's Tony like Franklin playing with Blue Murder. <laughs> yeah. So I got to be John Sykes for to be... uh, three minutes. Yeah. So that's why we turned uh, Passion into. Uh, like a blue murder ish uh, song. Like if you mm -hmm. listen to the harmonies, I'm doing the John Sykes harmonies, and uh, there, there's a um, you can hear a little bit of White Snake at the end from the Still of the Night. Oh yeah, if you listen to it. You yeah, listen to it all the time. You can hear the bridge from the uh, Still of the Night. Yeah, that and, was uh, uh, that, and they came out with a video with that one as well. Yeah, and so I, I mean, I'm very proud of, of this cover. I think it's a really good one. And Jim, as usual, did a great uh, job on it. Yes, and uh, see, I keep saying these. Another one of my favorites. They're all my favorites, Jim. Every one of them is my favorites, but um, they really are. Um, 1981. That song is awesome, and his fiance Colleen plays the drums on that one. Yeah, yeah, that one. Uh, it just takes me back. Like he says, take me back, take me back to 1981. That's a great, and there's an awesome solo on there too by Steph Hahn. Thank you. Um, yeah. The next one, as well as an angel cover, uh, don't take your love. So you got to yeah, play with Frank Domino as well. It, yeah. You yeah, got to be Punky Metal. That's great. That's awesome. Right. You got to be Punky Metal. Yeah, my, that band is so underrated, Steph. So underrated. I mean, a lot of musicians cite them as influences, Angel, but yeah, they never got they never got the credit they deserved. You know, they never got the push uh, from the record company. Uh, have you heard the, the their last album? It's, they it's really they just good. came out with a new one. I, I I didn't get it yet. It's very good. I mean, he still sings like uh, I mean, he has a great voice. The the songs are great. Yeah, they play great. But in France, I think in Europe, even uh, they are they are totally unknown. Nobody knows them. They don't know them, right? Well, you know, yeah, Led that's... Zeppelin. Led Zeppelin, they say too, is huge over here and over and over where they, you know, in England, they're not as big as they are in America. I don't know about that. So I think they're yeah. huge everywhere. Well, I mean, everybody knows them, but I'm saying, yeah, America Zeppelin is like God, you know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um. Couple more. We're going to talk about Broken, which had uh, yeah. Robbie Lochner, who plays with Jack Russell's Great White, uh, yeah. Vinnie Appice, and Rick Fox are on there. That's a great song. They also came out with a video for that. Hmm. Um, yeah. And uh, here's the last one I want to talk about: Candle. So you got to play with Mike Tramp as well. Well, you got yeah, to record right. with Every Mike Tramp. Yeah, everybody. <laughs> and it's a great song. I didn't know this song before, and I, I think it's. Awesome song. Yeah, Freaking Nature. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, Candle. Uh, Mike Tramp sang on it. So let's talk about a couple of things you got upcoming. Um, you got a brand new Jim Crean album. Yeah. Called Kill the Beautiful. Mm -hmm. um, one of the songs that was released is called Stone Cold, which sounds like Dio Strange Highways. I always think that that song came off of Dio Strange exactly. Highways. Exactly. Right? I totally agree. Yeah, it sounds, it sounds like that. And don't forget, you got... You got Vinnie Abbasi playing drums, so that's a big part of it. And you know what? Strange Highways is one of my favorite uh, Dio album. There you go. It's one of my favorites too, Steph. Yeah, me too. I saw we have maybe the two, uh, the only two who likes the, <laughs> this album. But you know, that song, uh, uh, the Jesus, Mary, and the Holy Ghost on yeah. that album is, I mean, come on. How could you? Pain, bring, and I, and now see, now you mentioned that one. We're talking about Jim Crean. I think on this Jim Crean's next cover album, he should do, and I said this in my interview with him, he should do Bring Down the Rain. Yeah. That's great a great song. song and I love the song. Uh, what, what's the name, what was the name of this song? Uh, Give Her the Gun, something like that. Give Her the Gun, yes. Dark song. Yeah, it was a dark song about... Um, oh, yeah. 
Yeah, abusive. And, and you're right. When I wrote um, the music for um, Stone Cold, I, I had a Stranger Highways in, in mind. I want the same feel, the very dark uh, soon, feel. As soon as I heard it, and I have it, I have it posted on my page as well, Steph, uh, that song. As soon as I heard that, I said, holy crap, it sounds like Dio. It's very, very dark. It's a very dark mm. uh, sounding song. You know, and, and uh, you know, I... Uh, Jim told me the, that pretty much the whole album is like that. Is that how the album's yeah. transforming? So, so the thing is, like, we had the idea, I, idea to to write an album together this time. So I did write the music, he wrote the, the lyrics and the, the vocal harmonies, and the, like in, in only uh, two weeks, we we did it in very very fast because we wanted to do it like you know like in the old days, you know. So there's a lot of guitar solos that I've done in just one take because I I wanted to, to sound fresh, you know. Right. So and and we wanted to sound like it's an album from back in the days, uh, like it could be uh, because there's some songs that the song will be like Led Zeppelin, others like Dio and uh, Deep Purple. And uh, so if you're into these kind of bands, you're going to love this album. And Jim has done an incredible work on, on that one as well. I, I don't know how he has the time. I got to be honest with you. I don't know how Jim has the time to release album after album. I mean, covers, original. Then, well, now, now the past year, everybody has a lot of time because of, because yeah. of you know the pandemic. But if you look back the past ten years, the amount of work that he's put out and the quality of it, it's all it's all quality material. You know, nothing is just. Uh, a, a crappy CD that's put out. It's mm. all it's all great stuff, and he has some really big names playing with him. Yeah, you know. But this time it's only uh, Vinny, him, and I on this. Right, album. it's only you three, and it's being yeah. produced by uh, his long one of his longtime guitarists and friend Artie Dillon. Yeah, right. And uh, and the sound so far is incredible. Great, I can't and I can't I wait think, for that I think one. It's going to be a real great album. That, that one. Well, you guys, just so you know, I'm keeping my fingers crossed. I'm gonna have you, Jim, and Vinny on the show, and we're gonna no do problem. a whole we're gonna do a whole interview and we're gonna talk about it. But um, let me just take a minute. I want to tell everybody, um, we got some Rock Shop T-shirts, brand new. Um, and I'm gonna be giving one away. So the first person to text. Please. Steph, you got one anyway. Don't worry about it. Perfect. Um, the first person to text, you want to rock, you rock the rock shop with Ralph to that telephone number in the left, gets the shirt. So I'm waiting. We're going to wait here. By the end of the interview, I'm going to give it away. You want to rock, rock the rock shop with Ralph. Anyway, um, Steph, so now that's the Jim Crean CD is coming out. Now we're going to talk about the variety of other projects that you're involved with. <laughs> I hope I hope my time doesn't run out here because I know you've got your hands in everything. So the first oh, okay. the first one we know about is Now or Never, which the name was changed to N-O-N, correct? Because there were yeah. so many bands named Now or Never. Yeah. Right? And so many songs. Yeah. And so many songs. I posted the video for the song Ordinary World. Ordinary World yeah, so uh, by, De by uh, Duran Duran. Yeah, so it was released uh, last year. Yeah, yes. yeah I think so in September. So now that was that's the one project. The one that I'm most excited about is the DOD project. Oh yes, me too. Very and I much. have to tell you, Steph, and I'm telling you as a fan, your voice with that music, you sound like it was a match made in heaven. So I'm keeping my fingers crossed, and I'm hoping for big things with that band for you. So. Uh, you know what? Um, the thing is, like, I've been contacted by uh, Tommy Denander. Tommy Denander is the who played on who played on Hollywood Monsters with you. Yeah, and he plays with Alice Cooper. He wrote yes. uh, two songs on the new Alice Cooper album. He's Detroit Stories. Guitarist. Yeah, and he played with uh, Jim Jamison from uh, Survivor. Survivor. He yeah. he so he passed away as well. He's a great guitarist. He's, he's super nice. Uh, I mean. So he's a real good friend. He lives in Sweden. And one day he messaged me and said, uh, you know what? There's a band in Sweden. They are 
they are recording the first album. It's very metal. It's like uh, like Judas Priest, uh, Iron Maiden, things like that. Yeah, that's what they sound like. Would, would you try to sing on that album? I say, yeah, why not? If it's you asking me, <laughs> I mean, it must be good. And uh, so he sent me the, the first uh, demo, and I was like, it feels like it's, I don't know, like it's home to me. Because the first band I got, I, I used to listen to was Iron Maiden, and kind of is the same feel. So I tried to sing on it, and it felt like, it, I don't know, like it was it's, it's, my, my music. Yeah, and, you, uh, yeah. I never get, uh, went so fast recording an album. I mean, I think the 12 songs, I recall the, uh, um, the song per day, like every morning. <laughs> In the morning, I used to wake up, sing, recall the, the vocals and something well, else. And well, I have to tell you, Steph, been, I mean it. That um, I posted I posted the song on my page, and we got a we got a huge response from it. I mean, it's 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 an awesome track. And when is that album going to be released? Uh, we uh, this year, but we don't know when uh, right now. Oh. But we we want to do the right thing because I I mean we all really believe in this album because I think with the right label, it can go really huge because. I think all the songs are very catchy. They are, I don't know, and it sounds like a real band. That's the thing. Yeah. So you're you're still shopping for a label. You didn't you didn't you don't know what um when no, it's going to be released. No, not not yet. Because, uh, like I said to the guys, saying we need a real good label, not like a, a one who won't do anything for us. Because this album is too good to to drop it. I mean. It, I, I'm sure if we if we find the right label, it's going to be like great. yeah, it's going to play everywhere. Well, one of the labels um, that's out there that does hard, a lot of hard rock music is Frontiers Records. Yeah, I know. <laughs> you know they're they're over in Italy, so I'm. Hey, listen, I'm hoping Jim gets uh, picked up and 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 records for them. Yeah, I, I mean Jim should be signed with Frontiers because it's right there, Ali and. Uh, Exactly. He's got more talent than than ninety percent of the bands that they put out there. Some of some of the I things. I totally agree. That's I always said that. I mean, I said you should be with Frontiers. I, I mean, that's the music for Frontiers. That's the musicians that belongs in, in Frontiers. Yep. So. And Carmine, his drummer, was on there with a band called Rated X. Yeah. With uh, with Joel and uh, Turner. Vinny as well. He's on. Yeah, with last, well, we, with uh, last in line. Yeah. With last yeah, in so. line. Yeah, you know, the only thing I'll say about that record label um, is a lot of times they, they put out so many bands, and as a fan, you you try to follow them, and by the time you get involved with the band, you're like, this band is great, it goes away, you know? There's no touring. The problem is, I mean, I love this label, but the problem is there's so many, like you said, but most of them don't play, so... right. It's just for for the album, so it's kind of disappointing sometimes. Um, one of the bands, one of the bands signed to them that I really took attention to was Revolution Saints. Did you ever hear them? Yeah, that's with yeah, Doug Aldrich, Doug yeah. Aldrich, Jack Blades, and Dean Castanovo. Yeah, I, I love the second album. Yes, Rise. They, they, that that yeah. I mean, it's like this. They, it sounds like Journey, you know, melodic rock. I'm right. like, this is great. This is great. I can't wait. I hope they tour. I want to see them live and yeah. nothing, you know? And they actually released a couple of albums and, you know, they must sell three enough. Three, yeah. They must yeah. sell enough that they do release the album. But as far as the touring part of it, there's nothing. And, you know, you, as a fan, you want to see them tour, you know, just like yeah. you guys. I want to see you guys tour. I want to see you on stage with Jim. Yeah, that's, that's the goal. I mean, now we have this stupid covid uh in yeah. a way but the the, the goal was to uh it is still to play uh the, the free together <laughs> i'm hoping because they're talking now uh they're, they're booking outdoor dates in the summer because by that time everybody they're saying by july everybody should have a vaccine or well, mostly everybody so the outdoor dates would uh would yeah, suffice but, you know with the with the covid from south africa the covid from uh the new England. strains yeah, that's another headache. 
So, I mean, Steph, besides those other two bands, I know you said you had like five CDs that were coming out this year. Yeah, I have, uh, what else do you an, have? an album in Brazil with the uh, Bra- Bra- Brazilian band called Sun Road. Sun Road? Yes, and I sing. I play keyboard and a guitar on one song, and uh, it's a mix between Michael Schenker uh, group, um, UFO, uh, White Snake. It's, it's this kind of music, and it wow. should be released worldwide uh, in a few months. Great. They are mixing it, mixing it right now. And I should have a solo album. Uh, coming Another out. solo album. Yes, but it's uh, uh, an acoustic album. Acoustic. Yeah, I'm very proud of it. And it's um, originals, and there's three covers. And Jim uh, Jim sings with me on one song. Oh, great. Is it a cover or is it an original? Yeah, it's a cover. It's a Deep Purple cover, Sail Away. Oh, Sail Away. Yeah, from uh, Burn. From Burn, yeah, of course. Yeah. Uh, then I sing uh, Nothing Compares to You. Oh, by Sinead O'Connor? Yeah, Prince. Yeah. You're, you're not, you're not going to rip up the picture of the Pope, are you? No. <laughs> <laughs> That's and, great. Um, and um, there's a cover of Genesis called uh, Super's Ready. And it's a 24 minutes long song. And it took me one year to uh, record it. Wow, because it's so difficult to play and to sing, and I could I couldn't find the right drummer because it's really difficult. So uh, it's a guy called Dave Pontrello. I hope I, uh, Dave Pontrello is right. is Jim's drummer, who's a great yeah. drummer. Of course, I forgot that we all know each other. <laughs> so, so good thing you have me, drum. right? And good thing I'm a Jim Crean super fan. Yeah. I got that for yeah. you. Don't worry, Steph. I got your back. Yeah, great. So he plays drums on the whole album. Yes. Oh, that's that's great. That's great. Yeah, Dave. Dave, I gave Dave props on the interview with G, with uh, Jim, um, and the guitarist he played with as well. Besides you guys, um, Art Kalenda, he's another guitarist he played with. Yeah. Um, yeah, so and, th- yeah, I'm listening. Go ahead. I said that Dave plays the, the drums, and I play uh, all instruments on this album. Great. So, I'm- so I'm holding out hope. Is there going to be another Hollywood Monsters? I don't know yet. I, I was kind of uh, uh, tired of this the label bullshit kind of <laughs> with uh, this past few years because Hollywood Monsters is is, is, is a lot of work for me. Yeah, because I'm doing everything. I mean, I'm writing the songs. I uh, I have to contact musicians. I have to. Uh, and most of the time, musicians get screwed by labels. <laughs> yeah. I, I know the so, deal because I, I do everything for this show as well. I got to contact the – but but I it's my passion. I love doing it. So it doesn't yeah, me bother too. me. So lately, I had people asking me about uh, a new Hollywood Monsters album. So I'm like, uh, maybe one day. I don't know. But I would like uh, to find a distribution for the Thriving on Chaos because all, yeah, all, it has only been released in Brazil. And to me, it's the best uh, of them. The best of the three? Yeah, so uh, I hope people will be able to, to well, hear that one. I mean, I know because it was on Cleopatra Records. The first one was on Mausoleum Records, correct? Yeah. And the second yeah. two were on Cleopatra? The second one was on Cleopatra, and the third one in Brazil with uh, music records. Music, but not on Cleopatra? No, 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 no. I one? don't want to. You don't want to be bothered. Uh, you don't want to say it. All right. So, um, that's uh, yeah. So Steph has the the new projects coming out. the The first album was going to be Dod, which is the one that we're super excited about. He has a solo CD coming out, which is an acoustic CD, and he also is going to be on the brand new Jim Crean album called Kill the Beautiful, where he's playing yes. all the guitars and the bass and Vinnie Appice on boss. drums and the what. And, and the keyboards, keyboards and the keyboards, right? right. And Vinny Vinny Abbasi's on the drums with that, and he's playing with a band called Sun Sun Road Sun Road from yeah. Brazil. He's playing on that yeah. one. He's also oh, by the way, he's also a master master illustrator. If you go on his Facebook page, 
he comes up with sketches. They're unbelievable. I mean, you can look look him up. Look at any sketch that he has. He does a lot of uh, a lot of front man, a lot of rock stars. David Coverdale, uh, Stephen Tyler was Everybody. on there. Gene Simmons, yeah. Ronnie James Dio, Dio. was on there. Yeah, <laughs> Dio was on there. So, um, you can sell everybody. What um, besides your Facebook page, Steph? Where can people get in contact with you? Uh, mostly on Facebook because I. Uh, I, I'm on Instagram as well, but I don't enjoy it that much, and I'm, I'm not on Twitter because I, I, I don't know. To me yeah, it gets useless. it gets a little it gets a little crazy. But anyway, if you want no, to look the thing up. with um, social medias, it's there's a lot of, of bad things. I mean, people you can see how bad they are. Oh yeah. So I try to be positive on Facebook, show only my music, and be nice to people, reply yes. to everybody, but. When you read comments to other people, it's kind of mean most of the time. I don't, I don't get the point. It, you don't get the so point. So I'm like, why, why should I bother being on Twitter and see new uh, I mean stuff? I mean, enough already. <laughs> I understand. Crap. Uh, so we're gonna we're gonna wrap it up. I just want to show the shirt one more time, everybody. We had the new we had the new T-shirts. Um, beautiful, beautiful. Thank you, Steph. Um, if you text, I want to rock to that telephone number in the left hand corner of the screen, we're going to make it simple. I want to rock to that telephone number. You'll get the t-shirt and anybody that wants one, just message me personally on Facebook or my, uh, show page and I'll try to get one out to you. And I want to thank Mr. Steph Han. It's been great. Um, thanks to you. We're all going to be super fans for Steph after this. I mean, I've been a fan for Steph for a while, but we're all going to be super fans. And, of course, your music is posted on my page, my personal page, Steph. And I hope to see you sharing the stage soon up there, man. I can't wait to see you. Me You're, too. An, awesome, you're an awesome guitarist, bro. Thanks. I can't wait I just to got, I just got my. I just got the winner on, on uh, my phone. Uh, really? Who, yeah. They have to tell me what their name is, though. <laughs> they just, they, <laughs> they're they're just giving me the telephone number. <laughs> but um, I appreciate you, Steph. And this uh, is going to be recorded. It's obviously recorded, and it's going to be up on my show page and my personal page. And you can share it, do whatever you want with it. Um, mm -hmm. send, uh, send me your address, and I'll send you a shirt. I'm going to do that uh, right, right away. Yes, don't worry. <laughs> I won't come to France, and I won't knock on your door. You, you uh, Anytime. <laughs> you're, you're, you're the type of guy who would do that. You're so nice. Yes. <laughs> no yes. problem. But friends, uh, how do you say au revoir? Exactly. Au revoir. Uh, merci. Au revoir.